Hi, I'm Rachel with Beyond a Sandwich, and in this video, I'm going to show you the tools and the basics of English paper piecing and everything you need to know to get started and have success. The great thing about English paper piecing or EPP is that the tools are so simple and the um, skill set you need is incredibly simple. So if you watch other videos, you will probably find that they may use a combination of different stitches. And since I have started on my English paper piecing journey, I really use only one stitch and that's the flat back stitch, which I'll be showing to you later in the video. But for right now, I want to talk about the tools and how simple it is. So one of the things that I really love about EPP is how portable it is. I designed this bag to fit in just about any purse or any bag. This is my go-to. It is well loved and it just fits right in my purse. It fits beside me in the car. It's just when I'm the passenger, of course, not when I'm the driver. <laughs> <laughs> so let me go through the different features, if you will, and tell you why I've designed this. So this is an Ulfa travel mat. It's just a, I think it's a six by eight. You can find things like this at the dollar store, or I've seen this one at Hobby Lobby, and you can see that it has lots of glue marks. So I like having something like this on my lap so that I can glue, because one of the things I'll talk to you about is glue. I prefer glue basting over thread basting because glue basting allows you to get closer to the fabric. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in this video. So this is a travel mat. I have directions for how to make this on my website. This one I have put in a few different sheets so then I can have a few different patterns with me. And then inside here I have a space to hold my tape and place for my scissors, I have one for fabric and one for paper. This you can find on Amazon. Um, I think both of these are Fiskars. This one is really old. I've had this since I was six. <laughs> so this is my paper scissors and my fabric scissors. Then they stay nice and sharp. And then in here I have my needles. I really like the Colonial needle in the Milner. I believe it's a size 11. I have a blog post on my website with all of the things that I really love to use. But the great thing about the Milner needles is they are so thin. Maybe you can see that. They're so thin. They're not like a regular sewing needle. So they're not really, really thick. And then these ones are great because as you stitch, they just bend, they don't snap. I've used other needles before and they snap. So this is a brand that I love and have been using for several, several years. And then having them in some sort of a protective sheath is really great. I was on a trip, one of our first trips and I had just one needle and the needle fell out of the truck not as we were driving we got to a stop so now I make sure that I have lots of needles the other great thing about these is I have not had an issue with them really getting dull. I have heard from some people change your needle after you know so many hours of stitching or so many projects or whatever, and I have really not had an issue. Probably been using these ones here for, I don't know, a few years. So one pack will last you a really, really long time. So this tape is what I'm currently using, and it's RNK tape. Some other possibilities that you can use are frog tape, it's green, it's about this thick, or painter's tape. Both the frog and the painter's tape are both used for painting applications. I don't like that they tend to lift more than this one does. This is much more expensive, however, it doesn't lift as easily, so I'm able to get a few more uses out of this. So this is what I'm currently using, and I found it at my sewing machine dealer. I haven't been able to find a great place to purchase it online, but it's called RNK Tape, and it's bright pink. Other people have used masking tape, and I have heard that masking tape has a tendency to leave a residue over time, so I'm less inclined to recommend that. So before I get to the glue stick, I want to talk to you about thread, and I'm quite opinionated about thread. I've used several different 
thread brands, several different weights, and what I am currently using and recommending is Sulky 50 weight, and they come in this slimline or they come in a thicker cotton and steel. So this is their cotton and steel. It's the same exact thread, it's just how they have it branded. Both of them are exactly same. You want the 50 weight cotton. It has a longer staple, which means that it's not going to shred as easily. I haven't had an issue with these shredding. I have had an issue with other thread shredding, and let me tell you, it's really a pain in the rear when that happens, especially on a block that's been completed and sewn into your quilt. So Sulky Cotton 50 weight thread is what I use and I recommend. I do have a thimble in here because sometimes I need a thimble. It's not very often, but that's another great thing to have, and then a pen. So then glue stick. I really love glue basting because it allows you to get really, really precise with how you're folding the fabric over the paper. And I have not been able to get that same level of precision with thread basting. So for glue stick, um, I love the Office Depot brand. It used to be Scholastic School brand, so if you can still find these or you have them in a box, I recommend this one. I don't love the Elmer's. I have found that the Elmer's tends to turn brown, um, and I have had it discolor fabric before. The Elmer's is easier to find, but this is my preference, and I stock up and it usually lasts me a few years because I use it both for English and foundation paper piecing, but this brand in particular I really like. And if you only have the option of Elmer's or another brand, make sure that you're getting the white or clear. Um, I would call this clear, but it, it, it really is white. Let me show you one other thing that I don't recommend. It's the Elmer's Reusable. I don't recommend that one, even though it is it's clear clear, like it's a gel in the tube. I don't recommend that one um, because it didn't have really good stickability. So this is the, the best one. This is, I have no affiliation with them. I just absolutely love them. I'm quite opinionated about them. I've just had the best luck with them. So now that you have, you see this is all that you need. Oh, and then, you know, printing out your um, templates, that's it. That's it for English paper piecing. These are the only tools that you will need. And like I said, you can just pack it all up just like this and then you're ready to go.